Roswell flight test crew here today to take a look at the Iris Plus quadcopter from 3D Robotics. And man, I've been wanting one of these since we first saw it in Vegas. Well, actually, it's uh, it's it's theirs. They want it back. What? They they want it back. No. It's just demo. Where? No. Well, let's start with the unboxing. So we received this with no external packaging from FedEx. So the stickers are right on the outside of this box here. Looks like it survived pretty well. It's actually a nice case. It's got a uh, handle the back, it's got wheels. So good for transportation, obviously, and strong enough to withstand the treatment at FedEx. So let's take a look in the inside and see what we have. Oh, very nicely packaged. It's actually just very solid in there. So let's start with the important part, the aircraft itself. Fits pretty tight in this case, actually. Very, very nice. Kind of pulling each limb out a little bit to release it. And there we go. Got the nice tall landing gear in here. It's got a tarot gimbal on the bottom. And here we have a GoPro 3 Plus Silver Edition in the cable to allow video output there. Goes to the transmitter in the inside. Get your video live here. There's a little difference here. On the older model, they didn't have this. This is the antenna, it faces down. This is the telemetry and the live video output. Um, this has the quick prop disconnects, so if you hold onto that propeller, it should just come right off. The props on these are threaded opposite the motor rotation, so like the Phantom, they come off very easily. So you just basically screw them on, and when you fly, they'll tighten, essentially. They won't come off. It came with two propellers attached, two detached, I suspect. It wouldn't fit with all four attached in there. So pretty tight looking little ship here. It's got a USB plug on the side. These are the new upgraded limbs with the lights on the bottom. So as you can see the shape of it here, it's, it's not quite square. Looks like it's a little bit shorter from limb to limb here than here obviously, but that gives the camera a bit more of a field of view, which is nice. So you're not gonna see your propellers or your limbs in the camera. The light here, for the flight controller is right dead center back. So when the aircraft's facing away from you, you can see the light conditions. Before you take off, you can check your GPS, make sure you're locked on and good to go. You know, I like how it's got the, the arming sequence right there. That's pretty handy, actually. That, just having that information right in front of it. This is for the, obviously, the, the new or novice user, but, you know, it's nice to have. The battery compartment, just a uh, pinch, and it just goes right in there. Pretty, pretty convenient, actually. It's got a couple vents on the top there for heat. Okay, so now let's see what else is in the box. Now we got the aircraft out. So, what do we have here? We have we have a transmitter. This is basically a X9 transmitter with a looks like an upgraded FR Sky telemetry in the back there. So that's nice. Already good to go. And it looks like they're using the AA pack on the battery. So might upgrade to a LiPo perhaps in this one, but that'll get you going. Those of you familiar with this transmitter recognize it as the Hobby King. Uh, X9 or, or FreeSky X9. Uh, it's a decent little transmitter, actually. It's, it's a nine channel. Uh, it, all the controls are labeled, which is kind of nice because you look at the details here, you know if you're in loiter or program auto mode or whatever you're doing, it, it's right there labeled. So no ambiguity as far as what switches do what at this point. So let's see what else here. We have a bunch of propellers. Those are probably the ones that are supposed to be on the unit. A couple spare propellers. Bears there and oh here we go we have ourselves a screen it's actually a very solid feeling unit with a built-in you know with a built-in battery that's pretty handy looks like it's got uh, a couple inputs AV in and out uh, HDMI power in and out for external power and let's see these are the antennas and it's got two antennas because this is the diversity unit so it's got two separate receivers in here, and we'll choose the strongest signal between both antennas. Now, I normally recommend two different types of antennas, because these are kind of the same thing, and they're so close together, not a big difference, but it's still pretty cool, though. Nice looking screen. Oh, it's in there tight. Wow, that's, that's something. Okay, we've got, we've got batteries. Five, wow, 5,100 <laughs> for 5.1 amps. It's little, it must be a, a low C rating, but my, that is 
that's nice. Our five amp batteries are twice that size, so they really got that down good there. Looks like there are a couple of those. Yep, two batteries. And they have the XT60s on there. Of course, so is the aircraft, because they're not a very high amperage draw. We have a telemetry unit. So this is what you hook to your computer or your tablet or a cell phone via a USB cable, which is probably also in here. There it is. This is the cable that allows you to hook your tablet to this unit. And we have a USB cable to hook to a computer. Now, the difference is it's an A to micro B versus the micro B to micro B for the cell phone or tablet. And, oh, this must be a power for the monitor, actually. Uh, yeah, 12 volt, 2 amp, that makes sense. So this is your external power source for the monitor so you don't have to use the batteries. That's pretty handy. Did not notice that at first, so. Huh, yep, perfect. DC only can include that too, that's pretty handy. Okay, found something else in here too, actually kind of buried. It's a little wrench, it's a custom made wrench to hold on to the motor perfectly as you attach your blades to it so you can attach and detach nice and tight if you want to without damaging it because if you use your multi-tool or a wrench on this you will scratch it and you know make marks on there this is perfect it fits like a glove <laughs> okay and lastly in the box the very top here a couple of little allen keys these actually fit the gimbal at the bottom because one of the things about a taro gimbal if you've ever used it before and when you fill up the SD card on the camera, you can't get the video out without taking out the camera. So this just helps you remove the camera or the gimbal from the aircraft. And that's it. So the aircraft itself, it starts at about 750. Now on the buy it page, you can go through the options and you can add the case, the gimbal, the GoPro, and the total is about 1589. Now we also had a little screen there. We found that on a different page, which that's about 220, 229 or so. And uh, for a grand total of about 1800 bucks. So that's what we received essentially. So first, I'm going to check out the telemetry using my Android phone. You have to go to the uh, Play Store and get Droid Planner 2. That's a free download, pretty basic. Okay, software's installed. Got it on the phone now. Second thing I'm going to do is, is hook the phone to this. So, blue end into the phone. And the bottom USB port there. Top end into the telemetry unit. Once that's done, it should pop up with software, at least in my case, automatically, and it'll display the location of the phone. Now, normally the aircraft would also be on there, but it's currently turned off, so let's power it up and see if it shows up. Okay, before I power on the aircraft, I've taken the propellers off because we're indoors. I have the radio handy. I'm going to turn it on. So, radio on. And install the battery. It slides in the back. And powering up. It's happy as it can be. So on the software here, we hit the connect at the bottom and we connected. connected. Okay, so you can also arm the aircraft from this screen. Now, if your fail safe's on, it'll warn you, but it'll tell you it's on and it won't arm the aircraft. Fail safe. So what I do here is turn the fail safe off by pressing and holding this. Failsafe's disengaged. Now if we hit arm, it'll start the motors. Arm. Now, if we swipe from the right, we'll see we have the, the telemetry from the unit, and we can check to make sure by checking the horizon real quick, which it's responding. From this point, now, information here, you can check your home position right on top of it, so no change. Our satellites, 3D meaning it's got all axis, it's gonna know where it is in, in 3D space. Our battery condition, our air time, which of course is zero, and our, our signal strength is pretty high actually, so there's no problem there. And next, um, here your editor. Now this is pretty handy, this is where the power of this thing comes in, is you can define here, uh, you can say, let's say let's go to a spine. It'll follow this, Right here, point to point to point, you can also edit the altitude at each point, which is pretty cool, actually, to aim the camera and such. Um, 
long press, delete that one. It's also got this wonderful survey region option. You basically draw what you want to survey and you set your altitude, make sure it's high enough. Let's go 20 meters there and endpoint, same thing. Five is too low, let's go 23 there. And it draws this nice thing for you. So it'll fly that pattern now. It's pretty cool actually. Uh, let's trash that. Um, Okay, back over here. Uh, locator, you can locate the aircraft in the system here. It just zooms in where the aircraft is. Uh, settings for the program itself. And we have parameters here for the aircraft. These are all your your PIDs and such. Uh, we're not changing this model because this came already set to go. Um, a checklist. You can just check things off, make sure things are working. You have GPS. You know, before you take off, make sure that these are, these are good. Um, Calibration to calibrate the gyros accelerometer, compass, and such. Now moving on to the video. So we got this little screen here, and we'll just power it on. Just press and hold. Here it goes. Oh, three robotics. Snazzy. <laughs> so little lights here tell you which antenna you're currently using. And right now the GoPro's it's off. It is powered by the aircraft though. So the GoPro, let's just turn that on. Oh, there's our video from the GoPro. So if we lift the aircraft and see, and here we go. <laughs> That's pretty nice little screen. It's a very nice little package, actually. Now let's take it out in the field and see how it performs. So here we are out in the field, ready to do the flight testing. And one thing I have to say it's kind of cool is Tekkenstein found this PDF over on the uh, 3D Robotics website. It's really cool. It gives you a point-by-point -point checklist, just like a pilot on a manned aircraft would use. Make sure you're all good to go before you go flying. So that's definitely worth checking out. All right, so now let's put the bird in the air and see how she performs. Okay, so the steady green blinking light means we've got GPS lock. So I press and hold this button to arm the aircraft. That light's steady, we're ready to go. All right, to actually get the motor spinning, we take the throttle stick and push it to the right and hold it there. Arm. And then to disarm, just pull the throttle stick low and to the left. Disarm. Waypoint repeat. All right, well she flies very smooth, sort of borderline spongy. You can tell she's definitely a camera ship, not a hot rod. Uh, watching the gimbal move is gorgeous. That looks like it's gonna be very good. But um, seems a little heavy when you're flying her. If she starts descending, you have to put in a fair amount of a throttle to arrest that and turn it back into an ascent. And I'd have to say, at least compared to our NASA, the altitude hold isn't quite as good. I'd say more like sort of multi-wee, if you're familiar with that. So now we're gonna try out the video transmitter and video system. So, power the screen on. Got video from the GoPro. That's great, it's live. This little knob right here adjusts the camera's tilt so I can tilt the camera down and up, of course. It's on the gimbal so it's nice and stable. And uh, video, perfect. All right, so for the first time ever, we're gonna try autonomous flight. This is the one moment I'm kinda of glad this aircraft doesn't actually belong to us. But anyway, here's how you do it. Click on the pen tool here, choose spline, then I'm just gonna draw a simple box out here on the field in front of us. It fills in waypoints, and then down here at the bottom, it's got the altitude for those waypoints. 
Now we're, we're free and clear out here, nothing to get in the way, so I'm just gonna leave the default 20 meters. So even though we're flying autonomously, there's always gotta be a pilot in the loop. So I've got three switches here that can help me do that on the radio. RTL, which stands for return to launch. I flip that switch, the aircraft's gonna come right back here and land. Over here, I've got a switch, which if I flip, just sets the aircraft down wherever it is. And then finally, I can reassume direct control of the aircraft by flipping this switch out of auto mode into stability flight mode, for example, and then I can just control it normally. All right, the last thing we need to do before we fly autonomously is upload the mission from the phone onto the aircraft. So hit your menu button on the phone. And there are a number of options here. The one we're interested in is send mission. Waypoint safety drone. All right, they're on board. She's ready to fly. All right, so out of an abundance of caution, we've decided to do this as a two-man operation, it being our first ever autonomous flight. Why don't you able to take control of it if I have to? <laughs> okay, you ready? Ready. Let's make some modest amount of history. Okay, armed. Okay. Taking off. Go for auto. Is it doing it? Yeah, it's doing it. That's what it looks What's the phone look like? Uh, it's, you can see it. It's rolling right along. Ah, perfect. Wow. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, it's gone. It's turning. I think we can quite literally say now, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, great. <laughs> All right, so that was our look at the Iris Plus quadcopter. We want to thank 3 Robotics for sending it to us, and we'll have it back in the mail tomorrow for you. Actually, I'm not comfortable with that. I've, I've made other plans. You know, I thought you'd do something like that. <laughs> well, we enjoy watching. See you next time. Fly safe! <laughs>